Number 10, spending time with negative people. There was a time that the only people that I could spend time with were people that fit into certain time slots. Regardless of the mood that a person was in, whether they were happy or they were sad, if my time to spend time with them was on Sunday at 10 o'clock, then it was Sunday, 10 o'clock, rain or shine. And a lot of times people would get together. They would complain about work. They'd complain about their relationships. They'd complain about all the things that are going on in their life. And the fact is, is that when I look at my life, I don't have a lot to complain about. And I really saw that that was bringing me down. And so now that I'm in the second act of my life moving forward and only have a limited amount of time left, I want to make sure that I spend that time with positive people and people that are filling my cup. Uh, number nine, allowing other people's behavior to affect my mood. There was a time that people would do things. I would get frustrated. I would be angry. People would be disrespectful. People would say things out of turn. People would basically be themselves, and I was angry because they weren't doing things that I wanted them to do. So the moment that I dropped those expectations, things got a little bit better, and other people's behavior doesn't affect my mood because other people's behavior don't generally impact me uh, to the degree that I, was, that I was internalizing it in the past. Number eight, prioritizing other people over me. I would try to figure out what was going to make everybody else happy. If it was going to make other people happy, even though I didn't want to do it, I would do it. And a lot of times I would know that whatever it is that they want to do wasn't a good idea or it wasn't going to be fun or it wasn't going to work out the way we wanted it to. But I would do it anyway because I didn't want to make the other person feel bad and I'd prioritize them over me even though I knew what we should have been doing or the best thing to do at that particular time. Uh, I don't do that anymore. If I don't want to do it, I just don't do it. I just say, I know this person, if this person really wants to spend time, then they'll, fin they'll spend time doing something that is mutually beneficial. If not, then I have to ask myself the question, is this person really being considered of what I want to do? So I don't prioritize other people over me anymore. Uh, the next one is expecting other people to act a certain way. I started to learn as I started to mature that the more that I expected of other people, the more opportunities other people had to disappoint me. And not because they were doing something wrong, but they were doing something that was a lot of times different than what I would do. I would expect people to respond a certain way. I would expect people to uh, internalize or to interpret uh, respect a certain way. So for example, one of the things that's really important to me is that if we make plans and those plans cost money, then if you're not able to make those plans, you pay for whatever it is. So we had a golf tournament, as an example. I had a group of guys that were going to go to a golf tournament. Then all of a sudden, at the last minute, everybody came up with an excuse for why they couldn't go. One guy told me it was my fault because I didn't remind him, even though I talked about it three or four times. The other person real said that they had something else that came up. And what they didn't realize, I had paid $175 per person for everybody to be in this golf tournament because I thought we had all agreed that we can go. Well, I got frustrated with them for a couple of reasons. Number one, because they flaked out. And number two, because none of them even offered to cover their portion of the tournament. And so as I internalized that, I realized two things. My expectations were, if I say something, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to be a man of my word because I've always been that way. And number two... If I do something, or I cancel on a plan that you're paying for and it's going to cost you money because I canceled, then I'll at least pay you that amount so that way it doesn't put you out and it shows that I respect you, but not everybody operates that way. And so that is an expectation that I had on them that created an incredible amount of frustration. So at this point now, I don't do that anymore. I don't put expectations on people. It's intentional. Uh, the process of getting to the point where you don't put uh, uh, expectations on people, it's an intentional process. It's difficult, uh, particularly when you hold yourself to a high standard, but it's part of the learning is not everybody holds themselves to the same standard I hold myself to. And that's partially why I retired at 51, because I hold myself to a higher standard than, than a lot of other people. Uh, number six, uh, setting long-term goals. I used to set goals. I used to have three years, five years, 10-year plans. And I just don't do that anymore because I went away from life being a series of accomplishments to really being a series of experiences. And so I may have an idea of what some of the experiences are that I want to experience. I must say I do have one long-term plan. That's a long-term financial plan. And that really is just a spending plan. 
managing the, the investment accounts. But the idea of setting up, what am I going to do three years from now? What am I going to do five years from now? What am I going to do 10 years from now? I just don't do that anymore because if those plans don't go as planned, it creates stress, it creates anxiety. So instead of doing that, I set short-term and intermediate goals. I know what my next vacation is next year. I know what I want to do next week. I know what I want to accomplish today, but I wake up every morning. My question to myself is, what am I going to do today? Because the other thing you start to realize when you start looking at your time a little bit more critically is that a lot of our time is taken up by planning for tomorrow. And we're not even guaranteed tomorrow. So imagine planning for tomorrow and tomorrow never comes. I just focus on what's happening today, what's happening in the immediate. And I don't set those long-term goals because most of the time what I say today is going to happen three years from now happens in a totally different way. And I can't control that. Number five, putting myself in situations that don't bring me peace. I would put myself in situations where I didn't want to go. There are parties that I didn't want to go to. There are outings that I didn't want to go to. There are places that I didn't want to go, people I didn't want to spend time with, people I didn't want to talk to, folks I didn't want to golf with. And I would force myself to do it because it would make other people feel good. But I, I think we reach a point in our life where we deserve to be a little bit self, uh, selfish. And we owe it to ourselves to be a little bit selfish because the only life that we're responsible to live is our own. And we cannot consistently do everything for, for everybody else. The one thing that's the critical to me is that I have peace in my life and that I feel good about my life filled with maximum happiness, joy, and peace. Number four, uh, taking time for granted. I, I've said this a lot in other videos and I would suggest you take a look at some of those videos, but there was a time when I always thought there was more time. And it hit me about two or three years ago, there was a guy I used to play basketball against, and he was a great athlete. He was a basketball player, played professional baseball uh, out of high school. The guy was just a beast. And he's a couple years older than me. He, was, he graduated one year older than me, but he was two years older than I am, and he died. And so I, I started to realize that when I looked around, a lot of people in my age group are passing away. So instead of thinking in terms of I have all this time in front of me, and again, I granted, I don't feel old. I don't feel like Yoda. I'm not in that scenario. But I do recognize that time is a resource that you don't give back. When I look back and think about things, I say, if I would have just had the time to do this, or if I would have just spent my time doing that. And so now I do not take time for granted. I want to maximize every moment that I have. And if it doesn't feel good in that moment, then I'm going to do something immediately to make that moment feel good. Because again, time is the most, is the only non-renewable resource. And I want to make sure I maximize uh, every second. Uh, number three, neglecting my mental and physical health. One night I went out with a buddy of mine and we went to this uh, establishment for adult beverages. And I looked around and I saw people that were my age that looked like they were 20 years older. I saw people my age that are on walkers because of preventable types of diseases. I see people at my age uh, passing away. Uh, I see people at my age with a whole host of issues that they could have got out in front of, but they didn't because again, they felt like they had more time. And I knew I didn't want to be that person. So I make sure that I try to exercise at least 150 minutes a week. That's the CDC guidelines. I try to eat well. I go to the doctor regularly. And I try to make sure that not only do I focus on my physical health, I also focus on my mental health. How am I feeling today? What's going on in my mind? I think in my last video, I talk about how not to become depressed in retirement. So I suggest you all go back and take a look at that one because it, it doesn't just help you in retirement. It helps you through the course of your life. But also, if I'm not feeling good, really digging in and trying to figure out what's going on with me today. Because what I've come to realize is that the big things that happen to people are generally a host of little things. I played basketball with a guy who was a great basketball player, by the way. And I found out that he passed away from untreated diabetes. And so he apparently contracted type 2 diabetes, which in a lot of cases is preventable and is something that you could, you could ma have managed well, you could live a full life. He passed away from it because he didn't take care of it. And he was about my age. And so, I, again, I go back to 
people at my age are starting to suffer. This is the beginning of when health problems start to take over your life. And I just don't want to let that happen, both physically or mentally. Um, and then number two, I stopped caring about other people's opinions of me. And for a long time, I really was concerned about what people thought about the things that I did. I, I, I wanted to make sure that I gave a good impression. I wanted people to recognize that when I was hired, I was the right person to hire because I was going to do a good job. Uh, I was just concerned with that. But at this point now, I'm just not concerned with what people think of me because I've come to realize that people are going to draw conclusions of you no matter what it is you do. In fact, I've had a couple of situations recently where I realized that people were drawing impressions of me based on, on stuff they didn't even know, just on what they saw when they looked at me. And folks, besides growing a beard and cutting it off, there's not a whole lot that I can control. I'm not getting plastic surgery and I'm not trying to go for the Billy D. Williams look. I could just be me. And I realized that me being me got me this far. I have a great group of friends. I have a beautiful wife who's just an incredible human being. I've got family who's around me. I have friends that are that are just great people. I've I've had a great career. I've had a really good life. There are people that didn't like me. And there's people right now that if you if you went and said, hey, do you know Sabado? They would probably have some negative things to say. But you know what? I probably have negative things to say about them. So at the end of the day, I don't care. And so I, I really gave up uh, caring about other people's opinions because everybody has an opinion and they have opinions. I have opinions and we're all entitled to those. And that's as far as it goes. And then the last one that I, I think, and this is really important, that uh, thing that I stopped doing, I stopped regretting the past. I used to go back and think about the past and think about had I done this, had I done that, had I done this, had I done that, would I have gotten here, would I have gotten there. And then I look at my life today and there's two things I realize that number one, I can't control any of those things that happened in the past. And number two, I have a pretty good life. And so if anything were to change, there's a whole thing called unintended consequences. And I don't know what those unintended consequences would have been. Had I not done X, then as that rolled forward, what would that have done? So the only thing I do now is I take any mistakes that I've made that I might be on the precipice of making going forward. And I start, I don't do those in hopes that it's going to continue to move me forward. It was once said that the moment that we're in right now is because of, not in spite of, because of everything that's ever happened in the world before. And everything that ever happens in the world going forward is going to be because of what happens right now. And so I want to make sure that I maximize my right nows. I learn from the past. I don't ruminate on them. I don't focus on them. I don't try to change them. I don't wish anything was different. I focus on the future and I try to do, or I try focus on the present and hope that that builds a great future. We never know. But again, if I could take every moment and maximize every moment, then my life continues to be good because life is nothing but a series of moments. So uh, those are the 10 things that I stopped doing when I was retired, when I retired. And what are some of the things that, that you've done uh, that either you've done or that you're thinking of stopping when you retire besides work? I know that's hello, Captain Obvious, besides that. So uh, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and, and cut out. But if you, if you like the video, feel free to subscribe. One of the things I do want to mention is that right now we're rocking with over 500 subscribers and that's 500 of you that relate and this content resonates with you. And so I'm just going to ask you uh, directly, share this with your friends because if it resonates with you, it probably resonates with them. And the more people that get this message, the better off the world is going to be. And it's really just about helping everybody live their best life. Because again, as I always say, I don't expect everybody to retire early. But I do expect you to live your best life. And the more information we have, the more positive information we have, and the more sources of good information that we get it from, the better off our life is going to be. And so if you got friends that can benefit from any of this or that are even in a tough spot or that may have questions about anything that they want to put on, tell them to come on, put them on the channel, and, and have them put it in the comments. The other thing I was mentioning is that I, I, I've been thinking about uh, doing a live video. So I'd like to know from you directly, would you be interested in doing or participating in or seeing a video that's done live by your main man, uh, Sabado? Because it's 
my content is about you, for you, and I want to make sure that it's relevant. I really don't want to waste people's time. So anyhow, on that note, have a good rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon.